Oops. It's, um, March, Jody. March 2023. Back in the game. Back with a new podcast. Um, you're sitting ready with the dogs. And how's things been last week? Good, mate. Good. Um, got a cut. Got a low of the week though. Um, I had to. I got dragged round a car. Uh, not a carpet shop. A bloody sofa and chair shop, mate. Can you imagine? Like walking around looking at sofas, just for dragged around by Laura. End. Yeah, looking at sofas. Trying, trying them out. Why is it so bad? Like, why is it? Why is it low of the week? Just went on for ages. Felt like I was losing the will to live in the sofa shop. In the uh, sofa shop, mate. I should have had what a kick, shouldn't results? I? On one Did of them. Buy we did get one in the end. Yeah, <laughs> we got one in the end. But it was, uh, it was like te- pulling out teeth, mate. Like you know, looking around at him. You know, it's just one of them things where you know you got to do it, but you just really can't be asked. You know, you'd rather just sit at home and just chill out, wouldn't you? So getting dragged around the sofa shop, you're like, oh, oh god, I've got to do a swim as well after this. What, what did real. you, um, what did you went for? A really nice and stylish looking sofa, a really comfy looking sofa, or um, an ugly looking sofa? Well, we actually <laughs> got two. We actually got two in the end. One normal sofa and one sofa bed. What is a normal sofa? Uh, not a sofa bed. So one without a bed in there, like a normal, like leather. It was a leather one. So if people like, or kids like, spill stuff on it, it won't stain. You know, you got to think about all, all that right. kind of stuff. You got to think about all that kind of stuff, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, but but nowadays they've got this these uh, treatments for couches where you could literally have a a. Uh, normal like made of fur or whatever it is I don't even know how you call it like, Mate, you leather. try getting that and, if you would... and then s- spilling a load of stuff on and putting that stuff on that ain't gonna that ain't gonna sort it out mate it is. it is it is <laughs> 100% you can even buy a warrant because I I looked I had my day in couches stores Joe I've had my days and they try to sell it with this uh, like um, thing on it where you can literally spill like wines and everything they say if you get any spots or whatever are on it within the first three or four years you get to like return it I believe that when i see it what do mm. so you reckon it will wipe off and not stain exactly no fucking way on a normal one not Dude, a leather just... one on a normal sofa yeah a normal sofa Find i'll send me you a, a video. YouTube video send me yeah i want to see it mate before i believe it you know you can't it can't be like a leather sofa where you just wipe it off Dude, nowadays we're sending shuttles to Mars like it's nothing. Just like mate, we've been sending we spaceships to Mars for ages, and people, and you still can't get decent mud guards on cars to stop spray on you. So, uh, you know, they you, they can do some stuff. And also, that's a conspiracy theory, mate, about sending people to the moon. A lot of people think that that never actually happened. It was just politics, <laughs> and it was set up. <laughs> Have we actually been to the moon? Who knows? There's a lot of people that are in the camp that it was totally fixed. I've got a low of the week, and I want to know your thoughts about this. Morning. Morning. So, um, obviously, I'm still in Hengelo. I'm going out to Amsterdam in like three weeks. Give me three, four, three more weeks. I'm still Escape lonely, to and solitary, and fucking Hengelo. <laughs> the good thing is, <laughs> trying if to you like... think about it, if you accidentally end up in prison at some point in your life, you'll have experienced solitary confinement in Hengelo, so you'll be totally prepared, mate, for what you might uh end up end up Wait, being in prison prison will be a piece of piss because you'll have prison would be more sociable <laughs> prison would be yeah, far would, more sociable it'd be, it'd be like a summer camp wouldn't it i gave you a call this uh, uh today and you said you haven't you did it right so with someone this week and i said that was a flipping week ago it was a week ago so the only time when i saw someone last week when I was when I drove to Rotterdam, I drove for two hours to Rotterdam to go to a party. But the party was from six p.m. to eleven p.m. That's actually a really decent time because the eleven p.m. I'll drive home, a bit past midnight. I'm home again, and uh, you're like not tired, didn't drink. So um, I went to a party, did some dances because I flip and love it, and then uh, boom, next day you're ready to train again. It's good, isn't it? But you did what? So you were on the alcohol free, were you? You Sam Long sponsorship there. Uh endorsements are obviously rubbing off on you and you've been uh you were like oh i'm gonna give it a go if it's good enough for sam it's good enough for me <laughs> i didn't order got- alcohol free beer i just ordered coke <laughs> <laughs> the the proper Joe- the original alcohol free <laughs> i don't need alcohol to have a good time i don't need alcohol yeah. to have a good time that's that's the um, original isn't anyway it, the coke 
here is the low of the week. So for this party, you paid like 15 euros entrance fee. All right. That's not a problem. But then when you go to the toilet, you need to pay like every time you go to the toilet, you need to pay another euro. I'm thinking like, what do you want? Do you want me to piss against the bar? Yeah. Or because I think it's flipping bullshit that you have to pay for the toilet, whether it's a restaurant, it's a club where you go yeah. out. I've paid entrance fee here or I don't. Like the toilet is part of the deal. If you don't want me to pay for the toilet, I'll piss on the floor. Yeah, no freaking way would I be paying for that. You know, I always jump over the things. I've been to service stations in motorways. I've been to like the train station, one of them in London. You have to bloody pay to go for a piss. I freaking jump that thing, mate. I ain't paying for go for a piss. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, like you say, you know. It, if, if I try like, and hold it in, I don't make it. I'm pissing on your floor. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm going. There is a, and I am paying. There's a person, there's literally a person stopping you from going into the toilet unless you pay like a euro. What would he say if he said, I'm skint, I ain't got any, mate. If you don't let me in, I'm literally pissing on the floor. <laughs> like, yeah. they, I mean, have, you'd rather they had a car charge. machine and everything. That's absolutely ridiculous. I'd rather them charge 20 euros and the toilet's free. You know, like, the that, that, that is just so flipping pikey, you know, that is. I've never heard of a club you know, that does that. Oh, there's, like, loads in the Netherlands. Absolutely shit loads. What, what the charge what, to go what, for what a week? Think. What, that's yes, a common thing yes. in Holland, to charge people that's to go to the yes, toilet? Yes, a common thing. Exactly. Flipping it. But you were, what do you know? What what you is do that? Flipping... I let me guess. Out of protest, you did a massive one in the toilet and just left it. And thought, I ain't flushing it. <laughs> that was your protest, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's like the cleaning lady can't do anything about it, can she? No, she can't. Um, that guy but it's more like you need to, need to like need to like take a wee uh, at the bar, like literally throw it over the bar. Like, well, all right, I'm not paying for it. But anyway, in Italy, it's a common thing. And I think maybe in Spain as well. So if you go out for dinner and if you look at the bill, you'll pay two euros 50 per person extra for them um, serving at the table or something. It's called something like serving costs so that there's literally oh, service charge. Yeah, like but that's a, a fork in that. Though. They do that in it everywhere. Like Dude, in I England, th- it's like a percentage. What? No, you don't do that. You don't do that in a no- Yeah. I in, think like, they that's charge the you like bullshit a percentage there is. of. Uh... Yeah, but that's not, not every restaurant, but in England, they do it as a percentage. So sometimes it could be like if you end up spending like uh, I don't know hundred hundred quid, it could be ten to fifteen percent. It could be fifteen quid. But it is but it's not like a tip, pay. right? It is op- well, it's kind of like supposed to be, but then they still like some people don't realize they end up leaving a tip as well. But it is optional, so you can actually say, "Excuse me," or my sister did it before. It was pretty embarrassing. But she's like, "Excuse me, you've charged me a service charge here. Can you can you take that off?" It can they will take it off. But it's a bit embarrassing. But in, you know, in it's Italy, like it's a common thing. In Italy, it's a common thing to pay two euros fifty or something like that for them uh, putting like a cover at the table, like a plate and a glass. And I'm thinking, like, that's the whole idea of me going out for dinner. I'm paying for the food. If I, if I, like, I, I, I'd rather do it myself than having to pay extra for everyone that's on the table. I think it's the biggest load of bullshit. I guess Brexit's hitting you guys harder than what I thought. No, it's not about that. I think it's about the principle. Like I'm going out for dinner, and I the know. fact that that's I'm going what I mean. All these hidden charges. Comes with... You're getting paid to put yeah. uh, stuff on the table, and then you're paying to go for a bloody piss in a nightclub. I mean, Jesus, like you know, you guys are struggling over Crazy. there. I thought we were bad in England. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think uh, just just put another year on on like the beef or something. Anyway, um, Jody, any positives this week? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh god uh, i actually saw uh you know lee uh who was the best man at my wedding he was actually weed killer man on um the sub seven he's uh just had his uh first baby so i went over there and saw saw him and saw uh saw his little girl that was quite nice and obviously we're having ours like in three and a half weeks now well that's when the due date is anyway so uh, they're really close in age. That would be really good. But that was really nice seeing seeing her. So that's basically, um, that's pretty much my high. Other than that, training-wise, been going really well, like starting to get get some decent fitness. So uh, I guess you could say that's a that's a high. But like other than that, not really, mate. I haven't really had a proper high for a while. Or maybe I have had a high, but I just don't write them down. I, I, I don't really think. Um, I bet you've had mm-hmm. one, though, haven't you? I bet you've had some good highs, haven't you? I know, I know what you're like. 
Mate, I've been in solitary confinement the whole week in my in fucking Engelo. I I am I'm really struggling to get a high nowadays. Um, but <laughs> maybe the high is like literally it's uh, less days to Amsterdam. <laughs> will you be here? Uh, uh, will you be excited the day you know the day before you leave to go to Amsterdam and you finally move in? Will that be like Christmas for a kid? You know when you're a kid and it's like you you know it's Christmas the next day and you're like seven or eight years old and you can't sleep. Is that what you'll feel like, do you reckon, the night before when you know you're packing up and moving to Amsterdam, you'll feel like that? I think it would be like Christmas, New Year's Eve, and his birthday on one day, well, all on the same day. You're going to have so many endorphins running through your body, aren't you? <laughs> I'll never get a high like that ever again. Yeah, um, yeah, you'll have reached it. You'll have made it. Shall we uh, go on? I've got a quick thing that I want to ask you. So. Last, last, last week, I had someone of the uh, Traveler Mercury dogs sending in a question, and that made me think. He said, what is sadder? So what do you think is sadder? Either a cyclist, an amateur cyclist, going in full-on team kit, just whatever team kit of a team, like Bora, whatever, Sky, or uh, Ineos, you know, to, like, on his bike, on a ride, on a group ride, or... A triathlete going to the gym in an Ironman finisher t-shirt. Oh, that is very, very tough. I would probably <laughs> say, um, oh, I'd probably say team kit for uh, the bike. Yeah, replica and team kit, that? I would say. Um, it's just, I don't know, I just think it's a bit sad. At least with the finishers t-shirt, you've done it, you've completed it, it's you who's done it, isn't it, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas the replica team kit, it's like, I don't know, yeah. I just think of like people that wear, yeah, I just think of people that wear team kits as like six-year-old boys that wear their favourite football team team kit. Do you know what I mean? You're six or you're seven, you're at school. Yeah. I don't. You don't really see grown men unless they're going to a football game, do you? But to go out training in that, it's like, you, you know, I just think like, it's a bit like you're a big kid in it, you know, and you're thinking that you're bloody Peter Sagan or like, I don't know, Woot Van Aert or Matthew mm -hmm. Van Der Poel. And like, you know, uh, I <laughs> yeah. don't know. I just, it, to me, it's just sad. Like I couldn't do it. If you can do it and you've got the minerals to not feel sad and you can do it, then fair play to you. But to me, you would never catch me. And I know I said this about the vest, the vest, I bullshit busted the vest and I got totally fucking screwed over. There was loads of pictures going The out. singlet, the singlet, yeah, the running the singlet. singlet. Whatever you call the <laughs> damn thing. If you see a picture of me in replica team kit, post it up, name and shame me. You'll have never seen me wearing replica team kit ever. You know, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. Like that to me is sad. There is, there's only one team kit that is sexy as fuck that you're, you can always you wear. wear it, I've got it's some sad. really, really good news. No, no, what I've got some it? really good news. I've received it today. It's the Traveler Mockery team kit. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> I received an email from Castelli today that I have to pay the final installment this week because they're getting the T-shirt in this week before Friday. So that means uh, they'll send it over to me and then it will be uh, hopefully at everyone's door next week. Yeah, and when I say team kit, you're talking pro tour team kit, aren't you? Like, not yeah, like yeah, pro tour. if you're a member of a cycling club, then fair enough, you know, like that's that's absolutely yeah. fine you know like if you're a member of an amateur cycling club that's mm -hmm. not sad at all that's like f absolutely fine you know you're supporting your team it is when you wear like a world tour top and you're like joe blogs you know i go out and, and, it, kit, can you and it's even worse it? it's even worse when you wear the uh the world champion version <laughs> for example the oh Peter my Sagan god world you know when i see version. the people in the world <laughs> in the Ineos kit you know and i'm out riding with my mates and stuff there uh, and say i see someone riding in an Ineos top i can't help myself but i say to my mate you know Come on, let's catch like Grant Thomas, shall we? Or you know, let's catch so and so. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like you just can't help but take a joke and laugh. I don't know why, <laughs> but so, it puts a I smile do. on my face. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sargon. I see so, someone. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I see someone, because we've got loads of people in Jumbo Fisma kits here in the Netherlands, and I'm yeah. I'm always like, go on, Tom Dumoulin, or uh, <laughs> yeah, Van Aert. Van Aert. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I mean. You just can't help it, can you? But have a little joke and laugh about it, can you? I don't know why. It makes me laugh when I see it. One thing I think, though, is um, 
Why can't our men or whatever race organization stop with flipping finisher t-shirts and just make it a normal cool t-shirt with Iron Man on it? Because I think Iron Man finisher, I think if you get the balls to wear a finisher, to wear a shirt like that, you better fucking finish the race. And I think just finisher on it just makes it look a bit goofy. Don't you think? Yeah, just make it as like a not yeah, like you say, a cool looking top. It'd be much better. You don't need finisher on it, do you? That is that is pretty lame. That's the that's the thing that makes it sound lame, isn't it? When they have the finisher on it and stuff. Yeah, just it makes it, it sound make lame. It, yeah, yeah, just make it look like a cool top that has I don't know whatever Iron Man you did on it. You don't need to put finisher. Everyone knows if they if they've done it, you know, or whatever. Uh, I think that I think that just make it look better, you know, like because it does look a bit. It would goofy, just be like. It? Iron Man New Zealand, boom, that's it, and then and, and then the swim bike run on it, like that that makes it look sexy. But then finisher, all of a sudden, it's like if it's it makes it sound like a local flipping park run. And most of the time, you'd only wear your Iron Man finishers top if you haven't done the laundry and you're desperate for a top, wouldn't you? You know, you I, for me, it would have to be desperate times to wear it. <clears throat> what about you? I just think, well, I would wear it if it wouldn't if it didn't have finish. No, but on currently, it, I just think, but currently. On it. Hmm? But currently, you're not going to uh, no, wear it out of choice, uh, are you? Like, it's a last resort, isn't it? I, I just do the laundry, Joe. I've never had the situation yeah. before. Well, I've never had I'm it. I'm a like, man. I, I've never had it, mate. But if I, it, that would be the only time that I'd wear it. I mean, to be honest, normally they're bike rags for me. You know, I clean my chain on it and stuff like that. Or like, give them <laughs> like, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair okay. enough, fair enough. You won't have even, uh, you, won't, you won't have seen a picture of me wearing an Ironman finishers top and you never will do. Trust me, like it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure you're gonna wear a shirt like that one day. Like, uh, the only person um, has the only person that's cool that has worn an Iron Man finishers top is our mate Chris XX, who was in the porn scene, wasn't he? Yes, that was how we came that across is actually him. Actually, flipping true. The, the that new, mem- how, the new yeah, listeners yeah. I'm will still... not have known who Chris XX is. Give fill us in. How did we come across Chris XX? Um. Well, as you know, we've got like the Instagram post of the week and all of a sudden we had a um, a, one of the uh, dogs followers send us in an Instagram post of the week. He was just doing his research on the Internet about biology. And all of a sudden he came across this video where Chris XXS was uh, meeting up with uh, a girl to perform an act, an adult act. And he was thinking like, wow. And in that video, um the other uh, person didn't know he was so fit, obviously, because she didn't know he was an Iron Man. Um, we were curious. We had so many questions. What is his FTP? Whatever. Uh, what is his bike fitness? So um, someone uh, connected us with him, and we got him on on an episode, and we did an interview with him. He lives in Las Vegas. And Joe, still to this day, now, uh, sometimes I have contact with him. I know. And uh, Tom actually stayed around his house, and I can tell you that Tom said that was a wild night. Honestly, can't go into too much details on here, but he had one hell of a night (laughs) staying with Chris XXX. (laughs) You can only imagine what he got. It was not. It was not a night, Joe. It was a weekend. (laughs) It makes Amsterdam look tame. Put it this way. <laughs> oh, he's actually um he's uh he's really really smart he's got a passion for uh for history and uh he showed us around vegas like literally like showed us all the old casinos told us all the history about it and uh he's nowadays he's in his late 40s um and although he's in a niche in the adult performing scene he is a very 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 successful uh businessman and it is fun some it is fun to hear um a story about that because you don't meet many people uh these days with uh, a business like that so uh yeah it's good fun and he's, he's an ironman athlete he's an ironman athlete so uh and he doesn't wear protein to, to kit does he you wouldn't he see doesn't him wear what, no, no, he wouldn't he, ef education <laughs> would you or something like that <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway um shall we go over to uh what we have seen on the gram this week yeah, so, so first, I wanted uh, to talk about Lionel Sanders like or the Super League thing, and uh, I thought it was really interesting Like, because I was watching these videos that Lionel was putting out. First of all, I saw the picture on uh, Instagram, and there's him, and it's sitting in this thing. I think, what the hell is that? Like, And then obviously on his videos, he's took a sauna to Montreal, so he's packed it up, took this mobile sauna to mm-hmm. the Super League race, and then the weigh-in for the Super League. So with Zwift, obviously we know everyone fucking cheats about their weight, don't they? People weight don't like, yeah. like hell. So to make that fair, you have to weigh in the day before. And then I guess they set up all your equipment. So you're on Zwift at the weight that you weigh in. So you can't 
you can't cheat. Um, and he did a weight cut like you'd get a UFC fighter or a boxer do. And he's has his starting mm-hmm. weight at 74 kilos. And then he gets down to like 70 point something. So I think he lost three and a half to four kilos, something like that, uh, by going in the sauna. Well, he did some training first and like some easy biking, easy running, sweating shitloads indoors. And then he finished it off with like some prep in the sauna to lose like the final bit of weight. Um, what do you think about that? Like weighing in the day before and like taking it to that. Do you think it's cool or do you think it's bad? <clears throat> What do you think? Whether I just think the weigh-in is cool or whether I think the weight cutting is cool. The weight cutting. Like, what do you think? Do you think it's bad? Like, it shouldn't be, you people, like, shouldn't be doing that? Or do you think it's, like, pretty cool and it's, like, I'll, you know, getting the extra? Well, I don't... If if there is, like, a, I don't even know how much money in that Super League because Swift Racing is involved. But, yeah, if, it's, if it is... Pride. I mean, for him... Pride, pride, yeah. It's, I mean, he's got the YouTube game. He's got everything. So you better take everything on to make it a great show. And it's it's a real short race, isn't it? So I think uh, it's, it's a smart move, really. If, if it were an Ironman, I would say weight cutting the day before, stupidest thing ever. But for a really, really short race like this, yeah, yeah, why not? But, like, um, I think it's really good. Like, I thought it was great to see, like, mm-hmm. cutting it like that, you know, when I thought, but, yeah, like, I bet next time for it, other people will do it. But obviously, it's like, where do you draw the line? Because obviously, he got down to 70. But if he'd have got down to 68, he would have probably been totally screwed. And I can see a lot of people like doing it for the next Super League yeah. and being in like a total like comatose, <laughs> do you know what I mean, state, like because they've, t- they've you, lost too much weight. Would you do this before the Hilly Ironman in Nice, the World Championship this year? Weight cut? <laughs> yeah, like but that. the thing is, you're not racing at that weight, are you? It's like you're cutting down no. to 70. But when he raced, he was probably back at 73, 74. It's literally you've just got to get down before you take the scales. But as soon as you hit the scales and you've got that weight clarif- like sorted, you're going to start drinking. So for Nice, it wouldn't make any difference. Well, it would have a negative impact because the only way you're going to get the gain of losing the weight is if you're dehydrated starting on the start line. Because there's no point losing the weight the day before and then on race day when you're in real life being 74 kilos, what you started off at, you know, you've just put your body through a lot more stress. So it wouldn't make any difference mm-hmm. for a, a race in real life. But I thought for that, it was great to see someone pushing the boundaries and doing, you know, being able to do that and uh, obviously paid off. I was really surprised with how well he did. I, I was hoping he was going to have a good race and I thought it was going to be touch and go as to whether or not he qualifies for the finals. But I was hoping he would because I mm-hmm. wanted to see it on uh, on the TV because it was obviously only the finals were broadcast yeah. live. Um, but I thought he ha- he raced absolutely fantastic. Sixth place overall, again, super for short course athletes doing the super league i mean you've got to have some balls as a long course athlete to even take part 100 percent, don't you because you know no he, he didn't make TV. it he didn't make it he didn't make it like a way better show didn't he oh yeah 100 percent. like I, I watched it because i wanted to see how well he would do what times he would hit and everything and i thought it was awesome to see he was actually competitive and especially on the final after the second one where they did the run then the bike and he got off and started the swim with the first i thought it was like freaking awesome like, I, I, I would love to see him uh, do it again. And if his swim was only 10 seconds quicker, or less than 10 seconds quicker, I think, uh, yeah, basically 10 seconds quicker, if it, he could do that for 200 metres, he would have actually been in contention for the win overall. Which, you know, mm-hmm. considering he was swimming 230s, he's only got some 220s. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, it was good to see. I thought it was good to see. I would love to have known what power he actually averaged on the bike. That was a downside because it didn't actually show you what power he did. Um <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing and you're thinking like he's, he, he loves the numbers <laughs> what <But> numbers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i want to see the numbers mate that's, uh, that's what I, I live for it the numbers <laughs> you know i know you do i know you do um anyway uh i had it i'll, I'll tell you week. what could We've have got... been a low uh, hold on i'll tell you what could have been a low of the week as well actually now which is a bit late but like so i was doing a session today on the bike started off it was going to be three minute efforts and uh, you'd want to see your power, wouldn't you, if you're doing three minute efforts on a hill, wouldn't you? Ideally. Well, well I know you want power to see meter, it. not working, canned, like completely, completely gone. Like, I don't know, batteries are gone or something. No warning. Just started the ride, wouldn't do it. Spent, tried to connect, had that. Heart rate monitor, tits up, not working. So I had to do these hill reps, no Why? heart rate, no power. It was like, I didn't have any gear, mate. No gear. Like, you know, I'm my equipment's what? not functioning. So I just had to listen just had to listen to the beat of my heart, mate. That was all I had was to listen to my body. I, I had to do it old school, mate. 
didn't have any data, powerful pensioner. All I could look at was powerful pensioner's data afterwards and uh, see what he did. I try and ask him, what did you average for that rep? And he says, I don't know. I can't see him. My eyes are too bad. So we can't see his head unit. So he has no idea what the hell he's doing at the time. <laughs> uh, so I, I can't even gauge it off that. So I just had to literally old school it, mate. I have no idea, no idea what I did. Like it's a shame, isn't it? It's disappointing well, when that happens. Sometimes it's sometimes it's good to do it based on feel. I've had two Ironmans where uh, I started on the bike and the power wasn't working, and um, you still need to be able to cope with it. Do you know what I would say is the good thing though? Because if you're in a heavy train block and you're feeling a bit tired. It's like you push it pretty hard, and as long as you actually you feel like you can push it pretty hard, it doesn't matter in a way that you haven't got the power. Because say I had the power anyway, but the power's shit, but I feel all right and I'm pushing pretty hard. It might be demoralizing. You might think, I'm not going to do the whole lot of these. I don't feel too good. But at the end of the day, you can only go as hard as what you feel like. If you feel like you're pushing hard and you feel pretty good, it is what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, and... Mm-hmm. You have to be, like you say, you have to be in tune with your body and know how you feel, isn't it? You know, sometimes you can look at power and it can, it can sway how you do a session too much. You can either, fit, you know, knock it back sometimes because you think you're going too hard or you think you're going worse than what you are and you actually get into it. I mean, as long as you feel like on them reps, you feel all right and you feel like you're pushing pretty hard, you're pretty much ballpark for a month. You know, it should be pretty grim, shouldn't it, if you're doing three minute efforts up a hill. Um, so, but, like, yeah, um, had to had to do it old school, mate. You must have been fuming. I know what you're like. You must have been fuming. I wasn't fuming. I wasn't fuming, mate, at all. Like I was chilled, mate, and I was like, uh, it doesn't matter, does it now? You know, I've got, I, I can just, I can just cruise it, you know, not cruise it, but I can just give it some, and I, I can't see if the power, if the power meter is telling me that I'm riding like shit, can I, you know, so, uh, mm-hmm. like, I was, I was chilled out, just trying to drop powerful pensioner. Is, uh, what's the powerful pensioner race, uh, the upcoming race? Ibiza, mate. He's in Ibiza. Is he? Yeah, he's in Ibiza. He's racing. His next race is a draft legal race, uh, sprint race. So it's like it's going to be absolute chaos. You can imagine a load of 65, 70 year olds racing like draft legal. So you can draft them on the bike. Um, 5K run, I think, uh, 20K bike, and then a 2.5K run to finish. He's a sprint athlete, mate. He's a sprinter. He loves looking go, go hard or go home. That's his style. He's got a 5K really? race this weekend as well, where he's hoping to break 20 minutes. He uh, was 2001 at his last mm. 5K, so he's 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 pretty keen. We've lined him up with a competition. He's got a he's got a race on his hands. We, we've found some. We're doing the lowest off one because basically these lowest off guys came over to Norwich. We had a bit of a burn up with them at a park run. They said next time you've got to come over to lowest off. So powerful pensioners going over to lowest off. They've set him up with a, a race. Someone who's around 19:30 to 20 minutes for the 5K. And uh, they're going head to head. It'll be uh, could be on a YouTube video coming out soon in a couple of weeks. Okay, all right, exciting, <clears throat> exciting <laughs> for uh, the pensioner. <laughs> that, that's uh, what the pensioner lives for, mate. That's that's that is that is his that is. It, is that the pensioner really single? The, no, he's married. He's married, and uh, he's got grandchildren. Is, he's got. Is kids. she going to come out to Ibiza? Um, she might do, but she thinks it's a bit cold at that time of year, so uh, she might not go. You know what they're like: old wow. people, their bones get cold and everything. Yeah, yeah they get pneumonia why, and all that. It's, like, it's cold in Ibiza, so I'll stay in the UK. Where it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that <laughs> what a load yeah. of bullshit. <laughs> you know, that's what you said. <laughs> she, like UK, mate. Like she's on there. You don't realize how the UK is tropical, mate. Like you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a lot like, of bullshit. I know, mate. Anyway, like, yeah. mains. There's something else I want to chat about. Like I was speaking to you today about marginal gains, wasn't I? And I yeah. was saying to you, Jody. Uh, apart from like training, what do you? Uh, is is there anything in the scene you've heard? Is there anything you've heard? You were talking about this altitude tent, right? So we've, we've, we spoke yeah. about this tent in the past. Basically, it's like a thing around your bed where you could sleep at altitude. You, you know more about it. Tell, tell us, because I've still There's a couple of it. options what I've got for you, Tom. I'm like, I've had a little look. And you can get one that goes over the bed like a tent. Like you could imagine you're in, I don't know, Nepal or something, Everest Base Camp, you know, whatever, wherever you are, somewhere like uh, romantic. Um, or there is another option for you. If you didn't want to quite put the tent up, you can get this box thing. That goes over your head. It literally just covers your neck. Goes out about thirty or forty <laughs> centimeters, and it's literally like your head is in a tent. So you've got the cheap one, which is your head is just in there, or you could get the uh, 
the proper real deal where it goes over, full on over the bed. They're your two options. Well, the second option is a no go for show because uh, that would make me make me feel like I'm flipping claustrophobic. <laughs> um, I know, mate. Could you imagine? I... You walk, you're forgetting the morning. You've got this thing on your head, and you're like hitting it into the bed post and everything. It'd be horrendous, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if I need to go to the toilet with that flipping thing around? Oh, you forget. I would look like that. I would. It would look like a DJ Marshmallow. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Oh, but there's no way I could use that. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious about the, a, a tent around your bed? I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, and you can post it up and show people I'll, on the I, uh, I believe- Instagram. I believe you're about the box it, around your head, but are you serious? You want to buy a tent for around your bed? Because, you know, I'm active in the dating scene and I can't, I I wouldn't want to see the reactions when you would bring someone home and she's like, we're sleeping in a flipping tent tonight. What's this? Yeah, I know what you're saying. And uh, yeah, she could come in. And I mean, I could just imagine that she comes in, you take her to your room. There's a tent over the bed, and she probably thinks it's like a scene from Dexter or something. Have you seen that? You know, like yeah, it's exactly. not going to be it's it's not going to be a good look, is it? You know, I, if I if I came round to some girls and I had a few drinks or something, and uh, there was a tent over the bed, I'd be thinking, is, am I going to get mugged here or something? Like, what what have she been <laughs> in my drinks? You know, like, <laughs> oh God, help! <laughs> like, I've gone to Jeffrey Dahmer's house or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What, the, <laughs> what the hell is this yeah and you can't really i mean yeah. it's such a contradiction because you're going out on a day you go into the club or, or whatever you're going and at that point she thinks all right i'm i'm like he's probably not a really serious athlete because uh we're going out for drinks but then you take her home and she's thinking like he's not a serious athlete because he's going out for drinks we're coming home and we're sleeping in a flipping altitude tent what's this or maybe she thinks like works hard, plays hard. You know, you're working hard because you've got the altitude tent and you're a serious athlete and you play hard. You're having a few drinks as well. So it could work out in that favor. You know, she could she could also yeah. think, you know, you're a proper serious athlete. Anyway, we um, we'd like to hear uh, your opinion on this. So if you're listening and um, if you are a, a gal and um, put yourself into this position, you're going out on a, on a date with a dude. He takes you home. And you're sleeping in an altitude tent. What what do you think? What's the uh what what could be a possible reaction? Is it could it be all right, let's go, couple goals, we'll go for the gains, more red blood cells, fitter together, or or Jeffrey Dahmer scene? We we enlighten us. I think some triathlete girls would be absolutely buzzing because they're like proper keen and they'd be thinking, sweet, like I'm actually getting some more red blood cells as well. Uh, uh that's what I reckon. I like, what do you think? <laughs> The, 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 yeah, they were, they were probably like, oh, I want to book like a training camp to a fond remote, but I don't have any vacation days anymore. So the office won't yeah. let me. But now I'm meeting this guy. He's got a fucking altitude tent. I'll stay in over next week again. Um, Mate, when word gets around but, in Amsterdam that you've got a tent over your bed, you'll have a queue outside your door. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, I don't think I would ever buy an altitude tent around my bed. If you um, had two bedrooms... Would you do it in one of the spare bedrooms then or something? Like, so then, like, you've, you you can sleep in it, you know, sometimes. Like, you know, would you? Think of the gains. I, like, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? Really? I'm tempted to get one. I'm tempted to get one. The only problem is Laura said if yeah, I get to one, be she's honest, not sleeping in it. Laura said she's, she, Laura kicked off when I said about getting it. I'm not sleeping <laughs> in that. You get that tent. You're sleeping in the spare room with that. Uh, all right, like you know, like, like she was not ha- <laughs> but, not having any of it, mate. <laughs> but to be um, but to be fair, you have been uh, consistent training on top of your game, not being in solitary confinement, and you've been like stable and everything for years and years. And when I look at at myself, I just need to start off with hard and consistent training for a couple of months. The fact that I'm doing like. And some sort of Ironman in eight weeks already scares me because I'm I'm finally back training, but I've been off so many months that I'm thinking, can I even complete this flipping distance? That getting a tent will be complete bullshit. I would feel like I'm an age grouper that did five hours of training and then buys a 15 grand bike just to make up for the amount of hours that he didn't train for, you know? It's um, absolutely fine. I think absolutely fine. If you, it is fine, it is fine, but I think you will improve more by doing some training instead of buying a tent. Go all in, mate. Follow, get the journey up there. Let's go all in. 
Tom goes from nothing to altitude tent <laughs> to wind tunnel testing to literally, you name it, he's going to pay for the books. <laughs> he is now going to turn into, he was the lifestyle athlete. He's now the checkbook sportsman. Any gains that he can buy, he's <laughs> going for it. <laughs> Send him he, he a shopping will be list. There, he will be square. Yeah. Send him a shopping um, list. His, ca- his checkbook's coming out. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, Joe, this weekend we've got Ironman South Africa and Ironman New Zealand coming up. Yeah. I. Uh, Any thoughts? Annoyingly, that South Africa one isn't going to be televised. It was last year when we were there. Maybe it's because the big dogs aren't there, they're racing this year that they've decided not to uh, not to televise it, which is really annoying because I, I was looking forward to probably the reason. I know I was gutted because my mate told me today that it wasn't televised. I was exp- I was looking forward to watching that because you've got Alistair Brownlee coming back, back from injury. You've got the Terminator who we want to see. Is he going to be on red hot form or is the wheels going to fall off? Who knows? Like could go either way. Um, mm-hmm. Bradley Vice, and yeah, he was up there last year. Was he second? Wasn't he? Um, yeah, he was. Yeah. Who else? Leon Chevalier. He was uh, flying when I yeah. was in the Kona and I was racing with him. I would say that he was on the bike incredibly strong. Cam Worth, um, Arnott Cam Gio, Worth. Anthony Costas. Ah, Cam Worth, though, but he, right, he wears and, a replica team kit, doesn't he? Like uh, He does do wear a like, replica you know? team kit. But, yeah. <laughs> but then on the women's, we've also got, uh, well, Laura Phillip racing. She was in absolutely blistering form last year. Uh, it's cool to see how she gets out of the winter. Anyway, there's like a massive start list. It's not getting televised. Then we've got Ironman New Zealand with, uh, um, well, it's like New Zealand National Championships and Sebastian Keenan. Yeah, racing. basically. Um, <laughs> Why didn't we go to that race? Why didn't we go there? Like, we were going to go there, weren't we? What was it that put us off in the end? The price, weren't it? The bloody well, price 15 of grand. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 15 like, grand, honestly, Joe. It's just 15 grand. Yeah, as a, it's such a shame because as a European athlete, unless you win that race, you can't cover your costs, can you? Really, like when we looked at the flights, the stay in there and everything, I mean, the flights have gone up to like two and a half grand return to Europe, haven't they? I mean, it's crazy that you, you know, because it, it, it's good to go. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're doing it to make a living, aren't you? Not to like uh, be 10 grand down, are you? You know, but it is a great race, isn't it? It's a, uh, we had a good time like when we were there back in 2020, didn't we? It's a flipping awesome race, like a really, really good race. Like I, I, I was really tempted to do it and um, it's just... Uh, a small 15 grand that's put us off for five weeks in New Zealand. It's just crazy how expensive it is. <laughs> it is, <laughs> yeah. Shame, really. it, honestly, it is really crazy how much it's gone. But I think I'd like to go back there again next year uh, like, and uh, give it a go again because, like, yeah, but we'll see. Who knows? Maybe flights will be even more expensive next year and I'll be like, no way. <laughs> well, speaking of, I have got a high of the week. I have got a high of the week. It took wow. me some time, but now that we're talking about saving money for New Zealand next year, it just came up. What is it? I am going to look at a spot for my caravan tomorrow. Whereabouts? Um, Utrecht. It's like at an awesome place. At an awesome place. Like in the middle of the, uh, the hills. Middle of the hills. It's at a lake. It's flipping awesome. So why wouldn't you move to Utrecht instead of moving to Amsterdam? Is it just like a small place and there's nothing really to do there? Uh, yeah, exactly that. And I've got all my oh, mates right. in uh, all my mates in Amsterdam, so it would be solitary confinement in Utrecht. <laughs> <laughs> solitary confinement in the caravan. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to move the caravan there in in the nature. I'm going to look at that spot tomorrow and sign it off. Um, and then I only need to take the caravan there. I've got a good but idea for you. It will be. Would it not be? It better? will be my holiday home. But would it not be better for you to just take the caravan, park it up in Amsterdam, and just live in the caravan? No, because you can't park it in the middle of the city centre. No, but you can park it. There must be a campsite somewhere near Amsterdam, like real close by. Like I could see. You Not really. No. 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 You could be like the Furies, you know, like Tyson Fury and his dad. You know, like John Fury. He lives. They live in a cab- caravan. He's never been happier, mate. Honestly, apparently they say that once you pick caravan life, you never leave caravan life. You. It, it's, well, it's, it is. Because like, yeah. Let me romanticize this for you. Um, basically, I'm going to put the caravan in the nature at a spot at the lake, well, near a lake. Um, I've got this front tent. I'll put it in front of the caravan. Then a nice outdoor kitchen in there, in that tent. It's basically like an altitude without the altitude, altitude tent. Um, outdoor kitchen, 
living in the caravan. It's just, I don't know, you're out in nature, you wake up, you're in the forest. There isn't anything better than that. And if I want, if I want to have some, some, some wild lifestyle over the weekend or whatever, I'll go back to Amsterdam um, and I can train with people and then I'll, I'll be back to my caravan. Sounds great, mate. Weekends or whatever. I'll come up there it's when like you've got your home. caravan set up and bring my uh, altitude tent and I'll camp outside at your your caravan at 2,000 metres above sea level. And then uh, when I need to, <laughs> when, when I want a drink well, or something, I'll chill out on the sofa, I'll come into the uh, caravan and then I'll go back up to the top of the mountain well, we're, again. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking 100 square metres of grass for uh, my caravan. So there will be a little bit of uh, room for your altitude tent on there. <laughs> Don't open the door, though, mate. I don't want to go back to sea level. <laughs> You'll have to knock so I can quickly get anyway, out. Anyway, um, bullshit buster. The bullshit buster is Tom sent me this thing, and we were talking last week about low carb, high fat, uh, all that kind of stuff. Like uh, Sam Long, apparently, is doing it now. He's uh, joined the club, and Tom found a guy well, who does his runs. To interrupt you real quick, interrupt yeah. real quick. I don't. I'm not sure whether Sam Long is doing it or not because he tagged us on Instagram with Travel and Mockery two days oh, ago, where he was, where he did shop at Costco's. Up, and I remember you saying about the the muffins and puffins and all that. He did buy some carbs, but it's either for Laura or for himself. For Laura, for Laura, mate, he's winding us up. He's he's winding us up. He's full on low, low carb, mate. You know, his coach would have a fit yeah. if he ate all their muffins. He's low. It, Laura's having it. She's eating for two. Remember now, like. Uh, yeah, but she's got yeah. cravings for muffins. I guarantee you it. You know, um, so I reckon she's all over that. And uh, he was on the shopping run, wasn't he? You know, he had to do it. She can't lift all the heavy yeah. bags. And um, yeah. I, this cool. guy though, eats butter. I mean, like even an avocado would be better if you're on a run. But this guy eats butter. Literally, he's got a block of butter in his hand, and he's running along. So you're talking about the video, it. right? The video we yeah, saw. Yeah, the video. Yeah, the one you sent me. The one with that guy eating butter, mate. Yeah, so before people think that uh, Sam Long was going on a run eating butter, so Maybe. there's this um, this guy, he's uh, he's uh, he's he's on a run. He's filming himself, and he said, "Well, and um, this is how you're you're able to run endless because your body is like uh, could, if you're running at a low intensity pace, you can uh, derive your energy energy from fats, and that's why I eat flipping butter." So he's running around with butter sticks in his back or something like that. Um, I call it bullshit, bullshit buster. I know it's bullshit because my dog the other day literally took some butter from the worktop no idea how she got it she must have jumped up pulled the packet off she ate the pack she ate the butter and she's very very sneaky like if she nicks some like little bits of chocolate wrappers and stuff she hides it up she don't actually know what she's taken you know until you find it because she obviously thinks this stuff through in her head really cunning little dog and um <laughs> laura saw it typically just as she went out the door for work oh joe the dog's been sick on the doormat i'm like oh you're fucking kidding me went down there in horrible thing dogs ate a load of butter and she throw, threw it up all over the doormat disgusting uh i i cleaned it all like i know i can see your face mate. i had to scrub it with you know put a lot of elbow grease into that pretty much got it laura came back from work said oh it still smells there then we had to put a bit of bicarb like whatever it is bicarbonate on there sodium bicarbonate to get rid of the smell. Anyway, yeah. massive fat, ended up getting rid of it. But that was what happened when you eat butter. So this guy is going to be, his guts are going to be playing him right up. And if, if the, what happened to my dog is anything to go by for him, he is going to be throwing up all day. His house is going to stink, man. Like he's going to be sick or like sick as a dog, you know, definitely bullshit. Buster. Would you, my um, dog. would you say, don't believe anything you say, don't believe everything you see online? That's the, don't that's believe the in the line. butter hype mate don't believe in the butter hype like high fat everyone i know who's high fat gets really agitated they get really angry about stuff and i think they start going more extreme and a bit strange that they veer off to going from slightly high fat low carb and eating stuff like i don't know but the salad avocado to eating stuff like ott butter like can you remember back in the day scotty baver when we watched his youtube videos back in the day and he was putting ridiculous amounts of salt on the stuff weren't he like 
what was it? Was it on egg or yeah, something? Like great. a boiled egg with loads of salt or something? I remember something? it was the same time when we were in New Zealand. And I, I every time, every morning, I was waking, like, Joe's got this ritual. So every always when he wakes up, he's just sitting on the couch, having breakfast, watching YouTube videos. Like, literally, anything that's on YouTube, he's probably seen it. Still has it, mate. I've every morning. It. It's, when I, it's ingrained. <laughs> every morning when I woke up in New Zealand, he was watching these daily vlogs from Scott Bavell. And I, the only thing I saw was Scott Bavell eating these butter and axe thing. Butter, axe, salmon, and a shitload of salt. Absolutely shitload of salt. And I was saying to you, who the hell is this guy? Like, what is he doing? And you were saying, he's a triathlete. He's a triathlete, and he's training for an Ironman. <laughs> and I couldn't believe what I saw. I think that was like righty at the tidy start of low-carb, high-fat racing. Oh, from, my God, yeah. From what I think. Because before that, I didn't really hear anything about it. And he used to train at 4.30 in the morning. It used to make me feel so lazy. I'm there, sat there eating my breakfast at 9 o'clock, and he's done four hours of training. Jesus, I thought, that guy is motivated, man. Like, that's what high, that's, you know, yeah. if, if you maybe if you can stick high fat, low carb, you just can't sleep, so you get insomnia, so you're up at training at, like, crazy times. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All righty. Um, that's it for this week. Joe, my camping spot is calling. Going to check out yeah. tomorrow. Escape to Amsterdam, Back mate. Escape from Hengelo. Update. I can't wait for the update when you move. <laughs> the escape from Hengelo. <laughs> <laughs> driving me flipping crazy. All right, see you.